Hello, to continue my 10 minutes with Construct 2 series, I wanted to do a second video with uh, little tricks. And this one is going to be uh, something simple, but I think quite useful when I figure it out. So when I started creating my one of my first games uh, that was a space chain, I wanted to have different kinds of enemies. Uh, but at the end, I wanted to have the same rules for all the enemies. I just wanted to distinguish among the different kinds and have different graphics. Uh, I ended up repeating a lot of the code and a lot of the fans saying that was not efficient at all, but well, I was learning. So let's suppose that you want to create an enemy. So I'm going to create a small sprite here. And you want to add graphics. I'm going to use these ones created by Kenny that perhaps you have uh, seen before. So I'm going to create this. So this is the first enemy. Now, Let's suppose that I just want to add uh, another enemy that looks a little bit different. I could create another sprite, or I could just try to modify this one. So that's the trick, basically. Uh, so what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to open this one. And if you haven't seen before, you have the animations here and also the frames. So by default, you have, well, a default animation that is there. I'm going to create two more. I'm going to duplicate, I'm going to say monster1, then monster2, duplicate monster2. Now, when I go to monster1, of course, it has the same image because I duplicated what I had in the default one, and the same goes for monster2. But I can modify this one, and I'm going to do so, and I'm going to use this little uh, slime that we have here. So now if we go for monster 1, we have this, monster 2. So now let's close it, and I can duplicate this monster, of course, pressing Ctrl and dragging. Hopefully you already have seen this in other parts of these videos or some tutorials. And the thing is that perhaps you haven't noticed that all these sprites have a, a initial animation property. And all of them start with default. But that can be changed, and I can put here monster 2 for example and I can even modify it and make it look a little more how I want it and this is also going to go for monster 2 so uh, that works that works pretty well so now let's say that I, I add another one so I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to go for monster 3 so, and I'm going to pick another image here, could be, I think, the snail that we have here. Okay, the snail. So that's perfect. And I'm going to say that this is going to be my snail. So, monster 3. So, that's that's a good thing. So, now, uh, let's suppose that uh, I want to create randomly uh, new new enemies. So, I'm going to say every second, or every two seconds, every two seconds, I'm going to create an enemy. And I'm going to say create object. It's going to be a sprite. It's not matter. Uh, and I'm going to put a random location. I don't know, between zero and 400. I don't remember the size of the layout. So I'm just going to put it there. So in a random location. And if I run it right now, it's going to be exactly the same that if I add a small action here, I can use the name uh, to create different kinds of monsters. So what I can do is say, hey, I want to keep that monster and I'm going to change the animation. I'm going to set the animation. And I know that all my animations are named monster, because of course that's what I wanted to do. And also they have a number. I'm going to say, I'm going to append a number. And I'm going to choose between 1, 2, and 3. So this choose, what it's going to do is to randomly pick one of these numbers, one of these values that we have here. And we can even add more. So let's suppose that most most of the time I want number 2. So I can say something like this. And it's going to pick one out of those. So let's say that this works. So we have our original four monsters. And then this time I chose 2, 2, let's see. Two. I want one of the other kind uh, because most of the time I had like two. So let's suppose that I'm going to change it. It was too many and two. So let's just make it same opportunity for all of them. 
and run it again. So now we should have monster 3, monster 2, monster 3. Let's see if I get a, a 1 at some point. And there you go. So it's speaking randomly and it will continue putting them randomly in, on the screen. So, but that's just to uh, be able to see a different animation. That works, and especially if they have a similar movement, that works okay. But what about if I want to have a, like, a little bit different behaviors? So, uh, what I'm going to do is to add to the monster uh, a global variable. Um, I'm sorry, an instance variable. And I'm going to call it type. Okay? So the type is going to tell me if it's a monster 1 or a 2 or a 3. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to change this a little bit. And I'm going to add a global variable. But I'm just going to say m type, monster type. I'm going to say here, I'm going to set the value of monster type to the choose that we had before. That is 1, 2, 3. And instead, I'm going to do this before, and instead of changing the animation for this choose, I'm going to say, I'm going to change it to type, m type, monster type. So first I choose it here, but then I'm still saving in the m type, the monster type, and then I can change the, um, the instance variable of the monster that I just created. So I'm going to say the monster is going to set value to type to m type. So now the animation and the instance variable is going to change like that. <clears throat> now to make them look uh, a little bit different, I'm going to say, I'm going to add a behavior. I'm going to do something simple that is bullet. And I'm going to leave it at that. The speed is 400 by default. But then what I'm going to say is like, hey, uh, for monsters that are type 3, that basically that's uh, well the snail. I'm going to uh, make the make them slower. So I'm going to compare the instance variable type. I'm going to say that if they are type three, I'm going to change the speed of the bullet behavior that is set speed to a hundred. So that means that uh, if the monster is a well is a, uh, what is it a snail, it's going to move much slower. So let's try it. So those four do not really care so much because I'm not uh, checking that and you can see that immediately is changing the behavior of the snails. The other kinds of monsters are being created randomly like before but they are moving much faster, uh, speed of 400 and whenever we get a snail it's going to be moving much slower. So that works. So the entire thing with this is that if you combine um, the entire trick with the animations, you can make elements look different, you can look sprites look different, and the user is going to think that they are different. But And you also can use uh, mix that with uh, instance variables, like in this case type, to add different conditions, different behaviors to those, to those uh, sprites, to those monsters in this case. Uh, but you do not have to change really the rules. E everything that I was doing here is going to work perfectly but um, if I just change this it's not going to it's not going to to well it's going to give it some variety so let's suppose let's the last thing before I end the video that I have another sprite that in this case I'm going to control with my um, with my keyboard and if I just say for example that this is a, a what is it an egg direction. So I'm going to be able to move it all around. And let's suppose that I want to be able to kill all monsters except the green ones. So just to make it simpler, I'm going to make this like 200 so I can catch them. Um, and the only thing that I'm going to do is to say, hey, whenever this one, ha oh, never my red square has collision with a monster, and on top of that, I'm going to add another condition. It says that the monster that I'm colliding with, colliding to, uh, is not is not equal to one. That's the green monster that we had there. Then I can destroy the monster. 
destroy the monster. So let's try it here. So, well, I'm going to move here. This one I can kill. This one I can kill. And let's wait for a green one that I shouldn't be able to kill. It's not going to happen anything. Well, that one moved too fast. So you see, nothing happens. So uh, for the for the player, what this is going to, to look like is if, like, uh, the monsters, they are different, that I program completely different the monsters, but the only thing that I did was to add a small condition to ask for a particular type. So there are many things that I can do. And on top of that, the other kinds of monsters, the one, or if I, let's suppose that I just want to kill them all, then I just do this, and I just have to do one condition to destroy the different kinds of monsters. In this case, three, but I could add like 200 kinds of monsters here, and I don't have to rewrite this condition. I hope that this trick is useful to you. Quite likely, uh, you're going to be able to organize your games in a completely different way and hopefully save some uh, events and some logic and it's going to be easier to maintain. Um, contact me, give me some suggestions, uh, topics to cover, and I will try to, to do as fast as I can. Thank you.